It's the Rock Man back with the only bench press workout I've been able to manage this week. It's been a rough one. Uh, all week, I have barely eaten what I would typically eat in a normal day, and <laughs> that's not even a joke, unfortunately. So, uh, I knew that even as many Nutter Butters as I could smash before going into this workout, it was going to be kind of a shit show. I just anticipated it. Um, <laughs> this is my last warm-up. Uh, what I'm going to do today is just let my top triple play and then use the very light 5x5 five five I did to talk about bench press setup. Because a good setup using an appropriate amount of leg drive is going to give you much better consistency. It's going to give you a more reliably executable repetition. A lot of times when you see guys flat back in it, when the weight starts getting too heavy for them, their feet will be dancing all over the place, desperately searching for some way to apply friction to the ground so they can get better leverage against the barbell. Your body is telling you you're leaving something out of the equation, and we're going to spend most of this video talking about leg drive and just kind of take for granted that you know all of the cues for creating tension in your upper back. I'm going to look at this set first, though, because I was feeling kind of bummed about this workout, but honestly, it's very hard to be discouraged by any workout that I get to throw around three plates at this kind of RPE, and a lot of the reason for that is leg drive. And in the context of this video, the intermediate and advanced lifter only needs to consider leg drive in one capacity. The only purpose it serves as far as you're concerned, is maintaining the integrity of your setup. That's it. If you understand the theory of the closed kinetic chain, that you grip the bar more tightly to apply more force to the bar, then this may resonate with you. That in order to maintain the tension you set in your upper back, you have to maintain that tension all the way throughout your body and root it to the ground. You want to find a position with your feet that creates natural tension across your quad. You want to get your knees closer to the ground. That's going to do two things. It's going to create tension across your quads to create that gentle upward pressure to help maintain your setup. And it's going to put your hips in a more natural position for your glutes to fire and fire hard. Because when that weight gets heavy, I promise you what's going to happen, your whole body's going to try to get involved. But this is productive, whereas lifting your ass off the bench is not productive. <laughs> so it's going to give you a little bit of extra height. Really, you only want your ass cheeks just to barely be in physical contact with the fucking bench if you can help it. And it's way easier to maintain your setup with that slightly higher angle. Because the most important part of keeping your upper back tight is not so much the scapular retraction. Uh, everybody seems to kind of get the control of that, but the scapular depression, the steeper the angle that you're driving your traps back into the bench, the easier it is to cue that scapular depression and it gets you better lat engagement and more power out of the bottom of the press. It's what your body is gonna do anyway. It's what it's trying to do when you lift your ass off the bench, except that's like a last resort. If you set up, so that you're in a position when the weight gets that heavy that every muscle in your body tenses up, it's actually reinforcing your strong position. That has the potential to make your bench press dangerous. That's just some of my random thoughts about it. This video is more geared toward guys who just haven't taken the leap into incorporating more leg drive. It just takes for granted a little bit that you know what you're looking for with your upper body position and if you have a certain way that you think about what you're trying to achieve when you're setting your upper back, I would be curious to hear it because you never know what kind of perspective is going to yield a eureka moment for you that allows you to add another cue to the arsenal for when you're not feeling the groove. By that same logic, I think if you're interested in improving your technical skill, you should listen to as many people speak to it as possible so you can take little bits from everyone and piece them together for yourself. Bryce Kerchek of Calgary Barbell does an excellent job with his video. Uh, Brian Alzru is another guy that I can think of that made a video about leg drive that I'm going to link in the description. This is my brief description. Uh, let's just go through a brief demo of the setup here. Get my hand spacing done. Get my thumbs 
under the bar, kind of find that corner of the palm where it's bulldog grip, get the wrap going. All right, now push up into position on the bench. Want to be as close with my lift off as possible to the uprights. So I just barely want to clear it. So now I've got that gentle arch set in my spine. Well, you got to do something with your legs or they're going to find something to do, usually shooting your ass up in the air. So I would suggest taking some of the power away from them by lifting your heels off the ground. Now you can still sissy squat your ass off the bench in this position. In fact, it's what I'm going to do to get my lift off, but you want to give yourself something to focus on so that when your whole body tenses up, uh, you have a cue to kind of focus on. I like squeezing the bench with my knees. So I get my calves underneath the bench and I squeeze it with my knees. And in this position, if you do find yourself applying upward force with your feet, you're not going to be able to lift your ass off the bench because you're hooked underneath it and it feels very secure. So when shit starts to get really intense, squeeze your legs on the bench. That's going to help your glutes fire. Here, I'm going to slack it out. Boom! That's what le leg drive looks like when you initiate. So let's see if I can uh, do a press here where I slack it out so you can see what's happening. All right, get my grip set again. Bulldog it. Crank my shoulders down. Get my lift off. Sit down. Slack out. Fire! And obviously that's going to be more intense than it's ever going to look. Because I like to stay tight in here so that it, you can barely see it when it happens. And yeah, the main thing is squeezing the bench with your legs and hooking them underneath so you can't lift your ass off the bench. Let's just see how close I can get to cheating like Sean Noriega with my fucking feet on the bench and my hands actually touching the uprights. As high as I can jack my ass in the air. Whoa! I can't even duplicate the ridiculous fucking clown shoe micro press that dude does. So if that's what you're worried about, put it out of your head. You can't do it either. Or maybe you can suck your own dick. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> I've done enough ranting about setup today uh, to hold me off for a little bit. I could talk about it forever, but I'll spare you that anyway. So I guess the plan is to kind of try to to add another set of triples with the next workout and if I need more rest in between work in some volume with a little bit lighter weight I hope you guys are training strong and as always thanks for watching